Hello, all together, my name is Michael Christen. Um, uh, last year I presented a project and we started a project at the FOSS Asia, it was called LockLuck. Uh, we collected a huge amount of uh, tweets and today I want to show you uh, how to handle a mass data, mass data uh, in three aspects. One aspect is how to collect mass data. Uh, the second aspect is how to store and index the mass data and the uh, third aspect is uh, how to evaluate the content of uh, uh, mass data. So here is a quick view on uh, um, tweet collection about FOSS Asia. This is uh, Histogram where it shows uh, how many tweets had been with the hashtag FOSS Asia and you can see uh, who did the most tweets and who was mentioned most and which hashtag was attached to tweets most. So this is a, a quick, quick view on what you can do at the end with this. And there was a Google, Google code in uh, last year where students made posters explaining what it is and this is the, the best one. It's about a server application. Uh, we use uh, uh, an API that we created. We use Elasticsearch. We make uh, everything with JSON and we use uh, Kibana to do the magic of evaluation of the data. So the, the task was, uh, we want to collect every tweet that's tweeted <laughs> out there. And the question was, how many tweets are there actually? And statistics uh, stop at 2013. The pr prediction is that to in 2015, 800, 800 million tweets uh, was tweeted today, uh, every day. And let's say 1 billion. 1 billion tweets every day. Let's collect them all. How far did we go? So this is uh, the histogram of the number of tweets we collected. Uh, after one year, you, we have 708 million. So this is not even the amount of one day. But we speed it up in the last few months. So uh, altogether, altogether, we have now uh, every, in, in 200 tweets, we have one. In every 200 tweets, we have one. Uh, from every tweet that's tweeted in the world. So that's not too bad. We can uh, increase the speed if we use, um, if we scale horizontally, if we uh, use more servers, but we know how to do it. So what's inside this technology? If you create a search engine, then you have a concept that uh, you have an index, you have something that harvests the index, uh, harvests the content, and you have a portal which presents uh, what you have collected. And the left part, that's the LockLuck uh, server. And uh, everyone is invited to create search interfaces. And I can show you how this was done. What's inside? We use Elasticsearch and the scraper. And for evaluation, many applications. This is not true anymore. We can use Kibana, but much more. We have a peer-to-peer -peer sharing interface. Uh, we dump everything in JSON lists. And we have uh, LockLuck.net, which is kind of a Twitter clone. And uh, it looks like Twitter, and you can use it like Twitter. It's not finished yet, but uh, you can see uh, what's on the way. Uh, th these are details about peer-to-peer uh, -peer sharing uh, mechanisms. We have a hierarchical tree of collecting, um, uh, at collecting topology. I don't want to go here into the protocol uh, into, uh, don't want to go into detail, but we have a kind of tree where we collect the data and uh, want to show you what, uh, how we uh, organize it. So this is the, the homepage. If you go to locklock.org, uh, just click through the about showcase architecture and so on and you get uh, a huge amount of information. Have a look at the API. Everybody uh, loves our API because it's open, there's no password. You don't need to apply, you just can use the API and do everything you want to do with LockLock. So um, this, is, uh, this is the drawing again of our uh, search topology. And uh, if we use Elasticsearch as an embedded node, we have it embedded so it's easy to work with it. You can also take it apart and um, have an external node and make a, a cluster out of it. So you have uh, shards on all these nodes. And then you can uh, scale this up and put on more shards and you, you can uh, uh, scale horizontally. Uh, the more data you have, uh, the more uh, shards you need. So um, 
what we also did is uh, connect with two uh, Locklock servers so we can have a load balancing on them. And um, what's running now and what we see now when you go on locklock.org is a, is a 16 shard on eight disks on uh, two servers construction which two lock locks and two load balancers uh, load balance in each other. And uh, this is uh, uh, the search cluster we uh, use right now to host 700 million tweets. So if you want to have more, if you want to have more tweets into a, uh, in this large scale search engine, we just need more servers. <laughs> and we put up more shards and uh, Elasticsearch is doing most of the work for, uh, uh, for us. We just say this is an index with a specific name and then it joins uh, the cluster and it increases the uh, capabilities to uh, store mass data. Uh, there are uh, nice front ends to organize Elasticsearch. This is the Elasticsearch he head. And uh, some years ago when, when uh, uh, a, a clustered uh, search was available in Zola, then you had to uh, have, have to make the wi wiring yourself. It was a work of planning. You have to draw where you want to have the data, where it should be stored. And Elasticsearch is doing this for yourself. And plugins to Elasticsearch is doing the visualization uh, in, which, in which part of the application which uh, shard is stored. So this is uh, created automatically. And if, if some uh, shard dies, th this happens sometimes because uh, if you destroy the, the data on disk, if you have a memory failure or so on, then one of the shards disappear and appear somewhere else because if you use replication, then there, there's no problem. Uh, you can also see uh, which kind of index elements are inside. Uh, here are all the, the names of the, of the uh, index um, schemes. And in Elastic HQ, you can see also uh, the distribution over the different uh, servers and the nodes on the servers. So this is a nice thing to have. This is the, the cluster status page, which shows you uh, the number of messages, uh, slightly below 700 million, which have this. Uh, I made this uh, three days ago. Now we have 600, uh, 710 million documents. And if everything works fine, I'll show it uh, as a live uh, presentation. This is the cluster have status, which is unhealthy because uh, the response time is too high. The server I rented in Singapore is not uh, good enough. Um, and this is a view to uh, Kibana, where you can do an, a test search and see a histogram and uh, the results uh, from, from the fields. You can have a faceted search using the fields on the on left side. And um, this is, uh, this is an, um, a presentation of one attribute that we collect in the, in the tweets. If we uh, have a, a large amount of text, then it, there are inter, uh, interesting things you can do. For example, uh, do an uh, emotion analyzation. We have uh, Bayesian filters which uh, try to identify uh, which emotion is expressed in, um, in the tweet. So the, the different emotions we have is joy, fear, trust, sadness, anger, surprise, and anticipation. And if you search into the, um, into the whole amount of tweets and make an analyzation, a, a histogram analyzation represented in percentage, for search terms of the presidential candidates, which we have here. Uh, this is the Obama, this is uh, Hillary, and this is Trump. So uh, we can see how emotion uh, changes, joy and fear uh, increases, decreases. And I'm, uh, <laughs> I don't know if this is going into the right direction. I don't know if our Bayesian filter is working correctly, but it's a nice thing to play around and see uh, what happens. I think the, the training of the emotion uh, dictionary is not good enough right now, but uh, that's the way to go. Just one example what you can do if you have mass data and analyze mass data. Uh, these are two maps. Uh, Visualize uh, doing the, yes? So who do you predict that will win? Pardon? What's your prediction? I, I don't have a personal prediction. <laughs> um, we do also a location analysis within the tweets. 
we try to, um, from, from Twitter, we only get uh, location names. We have a location database and we uh, calculate the uh, geo coordinates. We put this into the database and if we make a query, we can uh, make a graphical repre representation of the query on a, on a map. And what you can see here on the left side, it's not very good to see, but this is Europe and the uh, query ter term was refugee. So in which part uh, in Europe is our tweets made about refugee? Now there's no reference about emotion or anything else, just the number of tweets. And it's a bit misleading. So if you, if you do an uh, analyzation like this, uh, it, could, it can be completely wrong. Because in Europe there are many languages and only in, in England refugees are called refugees. So therefore you have here a big red dot and uh, so every, every time you do a representation like this you have to interpret it. So there's not a, the most topic in, in England here, refugees, but it's just their language where I <laughs> use the term to search uh, this. Uh, on the right side uh, you see uh, Singapore here and it's the Hayes map. <laughs> It's the num number of tweets uh, with the word Hayes in it. And it's tweeted mostly in Singapore. But maybe you can do an interpretation as well and say, uh, Singaporeans uh, do, do more tweets than in other countries. Maybe that's true, but I don't know. So <laughs> it, maybe it doesn't mean there was more Hayes. <laughs> So uh, you must think about what kind of representation you have. But it's nice to have. You can do a normalization, and then the expression what it means is clearer. So uh, we had uh, Google Summer of Code created a nice front end, uh, like, like a Twitter clone, uh, which is still uh, being made. And in, uh, in December, we had a Google Code in where we asked people to make applications for the search front end. So people made just what I want to do here is somebody um, who made a Star Wars tweet retriever using Loglack as a, as a back end. Uh, this person just wanted to have Star Wars uh, terms and tweets and it collects all this using uh, Loglack. Then we made an uh, artificial intelligence chatbot and um, it works like this. This is a, um, a chatbot for... Um, I don't know. Telegram. Um, and it, it selects, uh, you, you, can, you can say something, it, uh, it searches for the term, uh, takes the last 100 tweets and selects then um, that tweet which has the most retweets. So we think this is a nice game uh, to, to show what we can do with an, a large database of tweets. And it's like an experiment if you can see uh, if it's possible to have some kind of intelligent answer <laughs> getting out of it. Somebody made a front end to search from the uh, LockLock API in an uh, Android application. And um, then there's uh, lo uh, the LockLock Walk, which is an um, Android harvesting application. This is a peer-to-peer -peer software which needs clients to do the harvesting. And this is a uh, harvesting uh, collecting, API, uh, collecting um, client on Android, uh, which doesn't have any interaction thing. It just tells you what, what it does. And it says, if you don't have Wi-Fi, then it's not doing anything. And you, if you have Wi-Fi, then it shows the tweets which is, uh, it is collecting and how many is there and some more statistical data. And it's all moving, uh, like a science fiction head-up display. And you, have, you can't interact with it, but it, it's uh, our way to collect data. And this is the loglock.net um, uh, front end, which is like a Twitter clone. And uh, it makes some nice statistics. Uh, if, you, if you ask for statistics from one account, it can show you uh, by analysis of the number of uh, followers uh, a distribution in the country. So you can see where where uh, your followers come from, and you see the most influential followers. So it's a nice tool for, for, uh, for Twitter, if you use Twitter. And it has, of course, uh, the twi Twitter timeline. This is my timeline some minutes ago. 
And it, it looks like a screenshot from, from Twitter, but it's our own application. Uh, we did some more. We, we can tweet also there. You can make something like uh, markdown uh, large text tweets. And large text are attached as images. And you can tweet maps as well. So this is the end of the slides presentation. I hope uh, I'm still online and can show you some on uh, in the index live. This is the uh, Elastic um, HQ front end showing the current uh, status of the uh, cluster. We can also retrieve a live diagram from the cluster. Um, in it was unhealthy this morning, and it's uh, trying to heal itself. There's one node here which has not enough enough shards on it, and uh, it's doing the balancing right now, obviously. And if you wait some hours, then every every shard has uh, the same number. Every every node has the same number of shards. If you do a query, you get an um, an a JSON. This is what uh, what you get. If you make a query on the LockLock -Lock API and you see um, the tweet text, the link to the tweet, uh, you can you can see uh, where the tweet comes from, Italy, which is kind of strange. <laughs> um, then uh, it tries to identify the language and says how good the probability, uh, probability is for this. Uh, um, we extract the hashtags uh, from from tweets. This is another place. Uh, this is the Kibana interface where you can do uh, any kind of search. For example, search for Singapore. I hope this is working. Now you see the, the number of tweets per hour. And there are also options here to, to count. Then uh, the account which was mentioned most is Singapore Star. Uh, Singapore Star, Star is also that account which is tweeting most. You see uh, the other accounts. Yeah. Yeah, this is the, the live. Uh, Front end from locklock.net, and uh, there's a map where we can see where your uh, followers come from. You can zoom into the map. This is my account, and because we have the information about every account, with which follower uh, and uh, you have, and which accounts you follow, uh, we have also the information about the location, and we can create this kind of map. We can uh, also create an, a live report. Here, this is formatted differently because it doesn't fit. Ah, okay. And I can see where the, my followers come from and uh, who are my most influential followers. So uh, a lot of uh, opportunities to have to um, analyze the data. Okay. So the, if you want to start with this, go to locklock.org and. Um, we have a really rich API, and it's explained in, in, in detail what it does, what kind of rights you have. We have uh, different classes of rights, like uh, green is open without any restrictions, yellow is uh, restricted to localhost, um, no, red is restricted to localhost, and yellow is, is uh, open for everyone, but localhost uh, access has more, gets more data. And uh, you can, of course, set it, uh, of course, uh, set it up and run it locally, so you can collect the data yourself. And um, there's also a nice app section. We we made uh, lock like applications, um, where everybody can provide their own applications. And uh, yeah, there's, for example, here this query browser. The query browser just uh, may uses the API for the queries. Uh, which is also used for suggestions, and it shows how many how many queries had been made, and 
Yeah, this is slow because it's JavaScript on the front end, which is slow, <laughs> not the back end. And uh, the query which, which was uh, used most is live <laughs> for some reason. And uh, it's doing an automatic uh, re-query, so uh, it fills up the index uh, itself all the time, and you see how, how many times this already happened, and when the next retrieval point is, and so on. So you can see all the queries made here and with the statistics how often it, it was made. So these, these apps uh, is open to for contributions uh, to everybody. It's very easy to make one. There's a primer which explains how to do this. And uh, we would be happy if you contribute such kind of uh, front ends, which are evaluations on, on, on the data using the LockLock API. So thank you for listening. Do you have any questions? So far. <laughs> Any questions for Michael? I have a question of my own. Michael, how much the server bill in a month? How much the server? Server bill. How much do you pay Amazon for your elastic search? Uh, this is a this is a server sponsored by IBM. Um, it, it's a, it has a price, but uh, I don't want to tell, talk about the price. <laughs> <coughs> if the location of the server in fact my the how fast your thing will work on. Uh, for this event I rented the server in Singapore so the access is uh, best here but uh, if you want to use this for your own it's easy to set up your own server you can run this on your own computer and collect up to um, yeah should be you can go up to 100 million tweets which is possible because uh, scaling up that high with one elastic search node is not recommended if you are in a multi-user environment. But if you are running this, this only for yourself, you are in a single user environment and you can accept that a search maybe takes some seconds and not milliseconds. So it's, you can do this on your own computer. Is there a way of, um, is there a way of uh, channeling your tweets that you'd say you set it up yourself. Is there a way of channeling your tweets to a particular geographic area? A way to channel it to a specific... Like from the scraper and getting the, the, the getting the content together. It, it, it seems that it's just a general sort of grab from... You mean uh, to collect only from scrapers from a specific location or collect Some only tweets from a specific location? But, well, both, but probably the first more than the last. Um, the the P two P topology is a tree, mm -hmm. and you get you get uh, a delivery of tweets from every peer which has uh, assigned your peer as the backend. Yep. Okay. So if anybody assigns your peer as a backend, uh, you get their their tweets. So essentially, it's like that you must uh, tell friends to configure their uh, uh, LockLock server to send it to you. Um, the default configuration is that it sends the tweets to locklock.org. Yep. But you can change this and you can set up your private network. Okay. So it's not a question if you can select it, you must tell the right friends to send it to you. Indeed. Okay. <laughs> More questions? Yes? How do we monetize this? How do you have any impact? I believe there's a concept, but uh, it's not, it's not uh, really uh, sure if we should do this and if I should talk about it. <laughs> so it's really unsure, but maybe yes. If not, uh, thank you for attending uh, Microsoft. We have the next one at 11.30. Thank you.